I think that there are, there are different cases. There are some individual countries who, you know, they could have re uh, increased their barriers. They could have been a change of government. They can be a change of, of, of policy. Globally, of course, we see an increased um, trend of, uh, of protectionism, notably from, from China and the U.S. So that is very worrying, uh, and that can explain some of the, the of the the um, increased barriers that we can. Uh, that, that, that we can uh, identify. Well, the U.S. EU, uh, the U.S. China, sorry, trade um, <laughs> disputes and, and, and trade uh, escalation conflicts is very worrying in that regard. Then, of course, we have uh, a long-term problem of uh, Chinese overcapacity in certain sectors, notably steel, aluminium, and others as well that are, are uh, affecting this, um, and some some of their massive industrial subsidies and others that, that unfortunately has grown uh, the last years. So mainly because of, of uh, big powers, uh, protectionist measures, I would say. Um, and this is also, um, this is unfortunately a global trend and we don't see an end to it on a short-term basis. And even more important than that, the EU and many other of our allies stand up and say that you know, we should have fair but, but sustainable uh, trade, but it has to be, there is no protection in protectionism. It only affects workers and consumers and small and medium-sized companies.